Thank you. Great. Thanks for Charlie and Sue. Thank you. Good morning again. So in case you missed it, it's a new year. We're all, we're all good. I mean, in, in the calendar that we follow, right? There are other calendar systems out there where it's not a new year yet. I was wearing a, a, shirt, a shirt last night at our party with Chinese characters on it, and somebody said, so are you celebrating Chinese New Year? And I said, that's not till February. I, I'll, I'll wear it again back th you know, then. So, But it's a new year. And so this year we're taking a look at, and Damien, am I on? Okay. Okay. So, this is going to be a talk that is not going to be on the, on the video. So, pay attention because you can't watch it again. We're starting a new theme this year. And the theme is, um, you know, as you know, last year we spent the whole year kind of looking at creating a world that works for all. And the theme this year kind of builds on that idea, and it's called Living Our Values in the World. So looking at what are our values and actually applying those values and living them in the world. So I want to start off with a quote, uh, and this is from our, our community spiritual director, Dr. Uh, Ken Gordon, who talks about a value. And he says, a value is an important and lasting belief or ideal that encapsulates what an individual or member of a culture holds to be good and desirable. Individual values influence our behavior and attitude and therefore serve as a basis for expression in all situations. A value exemplifies a person's principles and brings light and action to what the individual holds as being important in our life, in life. So our values are the light of our life. You know, that was one of the reasons I used the quote out of the Quran this morning was, was I wanted to talk about how our values are the light of our life. And when we're aware of our values, of our light, then we live truly from those values and we live as our authentic self, as who we really are. When we claim those values and are, are conscious of them, we feel in alignment. We feel in alignment with ourselves and the universe and the world. And we've, all of us have experienced that some time of living in that sense of alignment. So the first thing to discover, to be aware of then, is what are my true values? What are my real values? And what are the ones that I really want to have? It's one of the things we work with in the intentions retreat is before we ever set an intention is what's my value? What is my value? What is it that I actually value in the world? Which is what a value is. What is it that I consider valuable? And many times we're living by values that are given to us by others or that we've sort of picked up along the way and they may be good or they may not be good uh, but they're values we've picked up along the way and they aren't necessarily our authentic values. So it's good to ask the question, what is it that is my authentic value? What do, I, what do I really want? And what's appropriate for my current life? You know, sometimes we have values from when we're growing up that served then, but don't serve now. You know, when I grew up in, in my house, one of the values was be invisible. Keep your head down, be invisible, don't be seen by your parents. And I think we just had a miracle. Yay because we value sound here. So that value served me when I was you know, 10 years old. That value doesn't serve me. Can you imagine a minister trying to be invisible? I don't want you to see me. Okay, it doesn't work, right? Are they values that are built on outdated systems? And so whatever our values are, we can consciously choose values that reflect who we are today and are who our highest self wants to express today. What does our highest self want to express? I'm going to take a, a fairly extended quote from um, the, the Science Mind textbook with Ernest and kind of walk through it a little bit. And this is from page 411. He says, the light is greater than the darkness, nor has the darkness any power over the light. By merely bringing in the light, the darkness vanishes into its native nothingness. This is the power of reality over seeming opposition or apparent separation. And I love how he puts that, seeming opposition or apparent separation. Is there in the universe of oneness any actual opposition or separation? No. Nothing opposes the one. Because there is only the one, and it's not in opposition to itself. And it can't be separate from itself. But we can have the appearance, and therefore the experience, and the belief in 
that there is opposition. There's something we have to fight. But the light is the great example of doesn't fight with the darkness. When we turned on the lights in here this morning, no battles happened, right? No darknesses were killed in the making of the light in this room, right? Okay, harmed or killed. Isn't that how the movies say it? So there's no battle that happens. There's just merely turning on the light. And so our values, when we align with our true values, are simply turning on the light. We don't have to do battle with anything else. He goes on to say, Ernest goes on to say, the relationship between the individual and the universal mind is one of reflection. What we image for ourselves, it, the universal mind, images for us. So all we have to do is start to image it for ourselves, and we have literally the power of the universe behind it. Imaging it for us. We can sit in the shade or move into sunlight. One of my favorite little quotes from his. You know, growing, spending a lot of time in Seattle, I, I think I've talked about this before, it was oftentimes I'd be in Seattle and it'd be a gray day, and I'd say, I can, I'm going to go hiking. I don't care whether it's gray and drizzly or not. I'm going to go hiking anyways. And I would drive east up into the Cascades, and there's a certain hill a little bit east of, there's a town called Issaquah that's a suburb of, of Seattle, and a little bit east of that, there's this kind of hill that goes up, and I'd crest that hill, and all of a sudden, it would be sunny. Beautiful blue sky, and I'd look back, and I could see the sea of gray back there, and I'd go have a beautiful day hiking for several hours, and I figured, you know, by that time, the fog had lifted from, from Seattle, and I'd drive back, and I'd crest over that hill, and there's the gray sitting on there. And so a whole lot of people sat in Seattle thinking it was a gray day. Well, I was having a different experience, right? It was a sunny day. So we can either sit in the shade or move into the sunlight. The law of mind as quickly creates one form as another for us, and we must allow the patterns of our thought to become molded to the highest sense of reality that we possess. See, the universe doesn't care what we place value on, does it? It just follows what we image. It just follows the direction that we put our attention. Michael Beckwith says, you want to know what's, you know what's going on in your life? Just pay attention to what you're interested in. That's what the universe will continue to create more of. Just what am I interested in? I think I talked about this a couple weeks ago, and you know, we had the comment that you know, you, most of you know that I'm interested in chocolate. And so for Christmas, what did I get from several people here? Chocolate, right? So what am I interested in? By giving our complete in attention to any one idea, we automatically embody it. The thought becomes a thing. The mental state takes on form, color, and temporary reality. Now, that, I love that idea of temporary reality. In the Hindu uh, tradition, they say, there's a wonderful saying that say, says, forms arise and fall. Everything is born must die again. Okay? Forms arise and fall. In quantum physics, we learn the same thing. The forms rise and fall depending on where the concentration, the attention is placed. Okay? So we have a temporary reality. Every form in our life has a temporary reality. You know, Luana talked about building this building. This building has, is a temporary reality. A thousand years from now, it probably won't still be standing. Ten thousand years from now, I'm going to guarantee it still won't be standing. Okay? Right? Yes? Temporary reality. Okay? Everything in our life is a temporary reality, but we take it on as a permanent reality in our minds, and we think that it's the real, it is reality. But it can change. What Ernest is saying is the universe can as quickly create another form, any other form. So whatever looks so solid, the relationship challenge we're having, the health challenge we're having, is a temporary reality. I can change my mind. I had a friend who in, in uh, the, the church I was in previously, in Clarkson, Washington, who had been diagnosed with food allergies. And she was sitting in foundations class one day. And I, you know, I, I, I had an opening there. And I said, you know, those food allergies, food allergies are... Uh, a conscious, begin as a conscious thought. She didn't like that idea. She said, but I have all this documentation that says that, you know, here it is, here it is, you know, I have all this allergy. And I said, you know, that's fine. And I just left it. About a year later, she was in another class. She kept on taking classes. She was determined and, and really involved in this teaching. About a year later, she looks at me and says, you know, I'm willing to entertain that idea. I'm willing to be open to the idea that it is just a thought. And that was kind of the end of that conversation. We didn't talk about it again. And about a year later, she decided to try eggs, which is one of the things that she was listed as being allergic to, and had no allergic reaction. She'd been working on her consciousness around allergies. 
And she got to see how this thing that was so well documented and so solid in her mind two years prior to that now had no power over her. Okay? And that person's a practitioner today, by the way. So it, it's a temporary reality that we deal with. Anything, anything in our lives is a temporary reality. We outwardly experience our states of consciousness. I both love and hate that statement. We outwardly experience our states of consciousness. So all that stuff that I don't like out there, guess whose state of consciousness it is? It's mine. Right? And the good news is, I can change it. So the apparent without is merely a reflection of the within, which is its cause. The apparent without, that which apparently is outside of us, is actually a creation of our own inner consciousness. And that's why I like to call the good news, bad news of this teaching. So what are our values? What is the light that we want to shed? What is it that we truly want to value? So this year, this whole year, we're going to start to examine and explore values that we as religious scientists and as the, we as people can agree upon. We don't have to take the religious science values as your own, but it might be nice to know what it is that we value and say, yes, I do, or no, I don't. And because I can say, no, I don't necessarily agree with that one, what I really do value is this one over here, is this over here. Because sometimes we have to know what we don't want to know what we do want. So we're going to take a look at those and understand why there are, they are our values. So in clarifying our values, this thought from Ernest also will help, because this is, this is one of my favorite little guidelines for anything. In demonstrating conditions, the only inquiries we need to make are, do the things we want lend themselves to a constructive program? In other words, is it constructive? Does it build up? Do the things we want express a more abundant life, rob no one, create no delusion, and express a greater degree of livingness. If we are able to answer these questions affirmatively, then all the power of the universe is back of our program or back of our desire. Does it rob no one? Does it bring greater livingness? I love that quality. Greater livingness. How many of us want greater livingness, right? Yeah, I do. So once we clarify our values, then we have to do the hard work of committing to living them. And one of the things we look at in the intentions retreat is, once we've set our intentions, it's what's, what we have, what I call, we have what I call our counter intentions. And we have values, we set our values, we have cross values, okay? So I have a value of being healthy and in shape and fit. You wouldn't know what to look at me right now, okay? But I do have that value. But I have a greater value for chocolate, good food, not going to the gym, not doing exercise, being comfortable, kind of, you know, I place a greater value on that. If you ask me, do I believe in good health? Do I value that? Yes, I do. But I value something else more. Okay? And so it's interesting to look at, this is when Paul says, the things that I would do, I do not, and the things that I would not do, I do, it's because we're tapping into the values that we really have. And so I really have a value in indulging myself with good food. More so than I have a value in doing what I need to do to feel healthy. Okay? And so what is it when we look at our values that we really, really, really value? And if you want to know what it is, you look at your life right now. The stuff that works and the stuff that doesn't work. And that's what we value. I, I, um, I had a funny aha this morning. I, I wrote this talk on Wednesday, by the way. I kind of stayed late on Wednesday. The challenge with writing talks on, on Wednesdays is that you think you're all done with the talk, and then Sunday morning or Saturday night, one of the two, you wake up, and the other talk downloads, okay? So this is part of the other talk. How many of you noticed our sign when you drove in this morning? And what is it saying? Christmas Eve. Yeah, Christmas Eve. Still talk about Christmas Eve, okay? So... Why is that? So I'm going to walk through two processes. One is the process that happened in my mind, okay, throughout this week, because I saw that. Monday was a holiday, 
and I was with my family, and I didn't want to, you know, you know, lose the family value, so I didn't take the time to change the sign that day. Tuesday, I drove in, and I was going to change, as I drove in, I looked, and I said, oh, God, change that sign. Got into the office, left at 7.30 that night, looked at the sign on the way out, and said, dang, I forgot to change that sign. Got busy. Okay? Wednesday, same thing. Dang, 8.30, drove out, you know, forgot to change the sign. Okay? Thursday, it's my day off. I'm taking my time. I've been so swamped with everything at this church for so long. I'm taking my time. I should change the sign, but I'm not going to. You know, I just, you know, whatever. Friday, I'm driving around, and yesterday, I'm driving around town, and I'm looking at United Methodist is still advertising their Christmas Eve service. The Christian Fellowship down here on Victor is still advertising there. Look at those guys. They're all, their signs are all, you know, <clears throat> that's called a placing a value on not actually doing it. See, if you ask me, do I have a value on excellence? Yes, I do. But is having a sign a week out of date excellence? No, it's not. Where were my values? Okay? Now, here's the other thing. See, I have a volunteer who's supposed to take care of the sign who's not been available lately. Okay? So, you know, so I can all, and I, this is not a blame, this is just an observation, okay? And so when you walk in and look at the sign, what do you do? Do you just notice, oh, the sign's still advertising the Christmas Eve service. Boom. Maybe I should help Reverend David. Boom. Or is it, Reverend David's not doing his job. His heart's not in the center. It did, you know, judgment, judgment, add meeting, add meeting, add meeting. And so we do this, and, 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 and it's something just that small. We play this game out. Isn't it fun? And it, it, it exemplifies where our values are. Where are our values? So mine was on my creature comforts, which obviously is a place I default to a lot, or my busyness, which is another place that I default to a lot. Okay? And then looking forward, well, see, they're doing it, so it's okay, which is another place that we default to a lot. So it's, just, it's, it's interesting to watch the little minutia of our thought and our process as we go through this. And there's no right or wrong about it, but it's just interesting to watch the process and to notice that if I want to change that process, I have to change something in my life and to catch myself. Okay? And I know there are people in this church who have said, if, I, if you need any help, if I can do anything for you, let me know. I'm sitting here looking at one of them right now. And so, and I, did I call that person? No, I did not. You know? And you know, all that stuff. So we, we can play with that. But it's just interesting to watch the minutia of how that works. And that's how, for all of us, that's how it works. That's how we get, you know, that, that road to hell paid with good intentions, you know, is we don't quite do what it is we want to do. So we have to commit to living our values. Once we know what they are, which is the first part, then we have to commit to actually living them. And it's both easy and difficult to do so. And the circumstances around us can be both easy and difficult. And we have to live our values no matter what's going on around us. Because we can get caught up in the what's going on around us. So we let our values be the lantern that lights our way. You know, when Hannibal was crossing the Alps, he would send soldiers out ahead up, uh, up the path and have them light bonfires to guide them on their way because he could keep the troops moving but he wanted to keep the troops moving in the direction they needed to go. So he had these huge bonfires that were guide fires to get over the pass of the Alps in the winter which is what they were doing to go invade Rome. And so we have these values that are like these giant bonfires that are like these lights that guide us on the way. What do I really believe in? And if we are conscious of our values and are checking in with our values what do I really believe in? It guides us on our way. It's one of the reasons that most organizations have a vision and mission statement. Ours here is to inspire people to, to, to live and embody the teachings of the science of mind, to inspire people to have spiritually powerful lives. And so we can take everything we do and say, Does this, is this in alignment with that bonfire? Is this in alignment with that guiding vision? We have our visions. We have our values. We want to keep moving in the right direction. So this week I invite us to do three things. Number one is to begin to explore what our values must be. And like I said, in order to know what your values are, just look at your life right now. Notice the places that are working, and that's where you're living in alignment with your values, where you're feeling really good about yourself. Notice the places that are not working, and that's where you're probably living outside of an alignment with values that you have. No right or wrong. Don't take out any big old hammer and beat yourself up if you're out of alignment. Just notice. Just be aware. 
Because all of us are living outside of our values in some place in our life. Number two, then, is contemplate what you, value, you would like your values to be, particularly in the areas where you're feeling a little bit out of alignment. What would I like my value to be? What is the value that I really want to have here? Because if I'm feeling out of alignment, there's a value that's calling to me, but I'm not listening to it. So what is that value that's calling to me? What is it that's calling to me? And number three, commit to living them. Commit to actually living the values. And that's the hardest part, isn't it? It's where the rubber meets the road. I'm actually going to live this value. Forgive yourself when you don't, and then return to living them. So that's our three practices this week. Begin to just notice what your values are. Just notice. Secondly, in the areas where you would like to have a, a, a shift, just what would, are the values that you want to have in that area? And then three, commit to living them. So can we play with that this week? And this year, actually? Because that's what we're going to be doing. So let your values light your way. I want to close with a quote from Ernest again. Wherever the image of thought is set, there, is, there the power to create resides. Wherever the image of thought is set, wherever we set our image, wherever we set our thought, there the power to create resides. I, I want to do a slide of sex. I have a moment here. There's several people that I've listened to that say, oh, this is going to be a dark year. This is going to be a terrible year. We've got all this stuff going on, okay? And the power of our word is such that if we say that over and over again, guess what we're going to experience? And we base that on what we think is going to happen in outside circumstances. I don't have to have a dark year. Nobody has to have a dark year this year. We have challenging times on all over this planet. Okay? And we're being called to be lights in this planet. Do we want to set our tone for, we're going, I'm going to have a year of being the highest and brightest and best light I can be? Or do I want us to come to circumstances and say, oh, it's going to be a dark year? Wherever our image is, that's where, wherever our thought is set. That's where the power to create resides. God, if thou seest God, dust if thou seest dust. Can we see good where evil appears to be? Then we can remove the evil. When we bring a lamp into a darkened room, where does the darkness go? The darkness neither came nor did it go anywhere. It never was a thing of itself, merely a condition. And we have power over conditions. I invite you to live a powerful year this year. I invite you to live a powerful values-based life this year. To understand what your values are. If you want to support with that, get into a class. Take the Intentions Retreat. Take the Prosperity Plus class. Take the, uh, any of the classes we do. They're wonderful ways to support you. This Christmas Eve service, we had um, a couple of candle boxes sitting up here with, with candles in them and lights in them. And if you were here, you would have noticed that the candles together created a lot more light than one candle that was placed here, maybe one that would be over there, and one that would be over there. There's a power in coming together and working together. And we as a community can be a light in this world. And us as individuals, each of us as individuals, can be lights in the world. And so I invite you to play with that this year. So let's move into prayer. And there is only one life, and there is only one light, and there is only one love. That infinite presence is all that there is. It is whole, perfect, and complete. It is a unity and a wholeness. It is in alignment with itself. Always expressing its greater and greater expression of good. And because that presence is all there is, you and I are one of that presence right here, right now. And so we are one of that light. We are one of that life. We are one of that good. We are one of that abundant expression of aliveness. We are that. We are within the alignment of the universe. Right here, right now. And so I speak my word that this day, this year, we continue to explore and express the values that are our highest and greatest values. We continue to be lights in this world in the most beautiful, powerful ways possible. We will allow that light, our light, the light of spirit through us, light upon light, 
to shine and expand in our lives, to express in our lives. We simply say yes, yes to that light, and yes to that expression, and allow it to guide us and move us perfectly. And so for the light itself, and for each of us who says yes to this light, I am so grateful. I know that great beauty is created out of this. And so I release this word, this consciousness, into a law that moves it into form and expression. It knows how to do that. It knows how to do the work. We simply have to say the yes and be committed and be serious and be willing. And it says yes and does the work. And so it is. Bless you. Thank you.